Hello and welcome. Following on from my laser driver ball that I did recently, a link to which should be shown above now, that use the 78L05 regulator chip not only as a driver but also a modulator to modulate the laser. I would like to explore the 78L05 in another slightly unusual application with a 555. This time it's configured as a timing component to produce a very good linearity ramp wave. I've produced two versions, one that you can see before you now and another further in the video that includes a few more additional components to produce a much better performance. The first that we're seeing now in front of us excels in a low component count and low cost. And this is a breadboard demonstrating how simple this circuit is. I'll zoom in closer for a more detailed look. Firstly, we have the power input socket. Then there's the power decoupling, polyfuse and LED in the left hand breadboard. Then there's the 555 and associated components, including the timing capacitor, the one microfarad. Then we have more supply decoupling. And finally, the 78L05, configured as a constant current source. Oh, and the output is taken across the timing capacitor, the one microfarad, and scope synchronization is taken from pin 3 of the 555. This is a scope pick taken from that output. The frequency at which the 555 is running is about 1 kilohertz. A couple of things to note are 1. The ramp starts at 3.17 volts DC and the hypotenuse of the ramp appears to be very slightly bowed outwards in a convex fashion. In this picture you can clearly see that it doesn't quite cross the centre of the graticule, showing that it's about 16 microseconds as an offset. And this represents about a 1.8% linearity error by my reckoning. Let's now have a quick look at this circuit diagram. The 78L05 regulator chip is configured as a constant current source. The amount of current is defined by R1 and if you place 5 volts across R1 you obtain a current of approximately 0 0.7 of a milliamp. Moving on to the IC2 which is the 555 it is configured as an astable multivibrator. R2 is the discharge resistor of 10 ohms and the charge is of course derived from the constant current source. The timing capacitor is C1 here which is set to 1 microfarad producing a frequency of the multivibrator of approximately 1 kilohertz. Due to the nature of the regulator chip, pin 5 on the 555, which is voltage control, needed to be pulled down by R3, which is a 12k. This is to compensate for the inevitable voltage drop of 5 volts. And of course you've got a interference suppressing capacitor here of C2. Moving on to the supply, D1 is there as for um, reverse protection and C3 and C4 are supply decoupling. C4, as the note describes, is best placed across P3 
pin 1 and pin 8, which are the supply pins to the 555. I strongly suspect that the capacitance and resistance of my Time 10 probe to the oscilloscope is causing that convex bend in the hypotenuse of the ramp wave. And the centre pin to the 78L05 is, of course, called ground. Well, in this case, it's not ground, it's the output. But I've put GND there and I put GND there to indicate that this is one continuous conductor. And I always connect a polyfuse to a supply. It prevents me from having to replace conventional fuses. It's quite handy, but it's not drawn in this circuit. But I always advise using a polyfuse. And so to my new and improved version. It's basically the same as the previous circuit, except for the inclusion of an emitter follower on the output and a level shifter by means of a zener diode. This zener diode drops the output from 3 volts at the start of the ramp wave down to about 0 0.4 of a volts DC. That is left in there to allow for supply voltage dropping down to say 10 volts so you need a little bit of room left left there and that feeds r5 which is a one mega ohm resistor which is on the base of q1 the emitter follower and finally the emitter has a load of a 5.6k ohm resistor which is r4 all of this improves linearity tolerance to supply and an output impedance which has dropped from 1 mega ohm down to 2k ohm where you've got to exceed 2k ohm if it's anything less than that you start to low down the ramp output this is a scope pick of that improved circuit the start of the ramp is now just 410 millivolts 0.4 of a volt offset and for all intents and purposes, the linearity is very good. The hypotenuse goes right the way through the middle of the graticule. We're now looking at the breadboard of that improved circuit. Let's now go take a closer look. The breadboard is exactly the same as the simpler circuit, except for the addition of the emitter follower transistor and associated components. I need to mention that I've been continually calling this a ramp wave. You can actually call it a sawtooth wave as well. They're both the same. Now this is a curious thing. I've always been told that electrolytic capacitors do not make good timing components. And I believe that this demonstrates one of the reasons why. The scope pick that you're seeing here is taken from the output of my simple circuit. I used a one microfarad electrolytic capacitor here and you can see on the bottom left that the frequency is slightly different now of 1.36 kilohertz. But any electrolytic within reason will cause the following effect. If you look between the two parallel cursor lines, you'll see that the hypotenuse that's normally linear goes into a non-linear shape, a convex curve. And curiously, this only happens with electrolytic capacitors. With film capacitors, this effect doesn't happen. It's linear all the way from beginning to end. And with ceramic capacitors, there is just a hint of this issue. So this simple circuit appears to be an electrolytic capacitor differentiator or sniffer. I've just presented this scope pick to remind us what 
a linear ramp waveform should look like. So what are the limitations of this circuit? Firstly, the 78LO5's burden voltage of 5 volts. Then it appears for a constant current of this 0 0.7 of a milliamp. It appears for changing C1, you know, the one microfarad timing capacitor, to smaller capacitances, the maximum frequency that this will operate at is about 25 kilohertz. Thirdly, I couldn't achieve a constant current lower than 0 0.7 of a milliamp due to the way that the 78LO5 functions. That means to achieve much lower frequencies you would have to use larger and larger film capacitors for C1, which is impractical and expensive. You can, however, explore the possibilities of increasing the constant current by changing R1, you know, the 6.8k ohm, to much higher currents up to the uh, limit of a 78LO5, which I think is 100 milliamps. And with changes of C1, the one microfarad, to smaller capacitances, this should increase the frequency greatly. Thank you for viewing this video. It would be really helpful if you subscribed, shared and liked it.